Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we play through our series of ultra budget deck techs. Again, if you haven't seen this before, this is the series where I put together super awesome decks that you can play that are sometimes based upon actual meta decks out there, but they will not require to spend a single rare or mythic to build. That's right. These are ultra budget, super cheap, and you can play them whether it's on arena or in paper. You had my curiosity. But now you have my attention. So without further ado, join me today as we put together a fun deck that I am calling, basically, Tokens. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So as you can see right here, our tokens deck today is going to be Boros colors of white and red. We have an average mana curve about 1.7. We're rocking 20 creatures. 4 instants, 4 sorceries, 12 enchantments, and only 20 lands. Now you're about to see the deck list in just a second here, and you may be wondering to yourself, Inferno Man, this doesn't really tread any new ground, so why are we making a budget version of arguably one of the most popular decks currently in the meta? Good question! Well, I'm glad you asked. Realistically though, have you all seen exactly how much it costs to actually put together Boros Convoke? Good lord, that is expensive. <laughs> in danger rather than try to do that for those of you out there who are interested in that archetype but maybe you don't want to invest that many rares and mythics immediately i honestly would recommend this version to get yourself started before you fully invest in the entire deck so to begin in the one drop slot we have novice inspector and thraben inspector both of these enter the battlefield and create a clue token for us and we also have Voldren Epicure also, which when it enters the battlefield, creates a blood token. Why are these tokens so important, of course? Good question! Well, that all comes down to our other major hitter here, which is Gleeful Demolition. This cute little sorcery for one mana allows us to destroy an artifact. And if we control the artifact, you get to create three 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin Creature tokens. So ideally here, you're going to be able to then get rid of one of your tokens here, which can then help create more tokens and help us go wide very quickly. In the two drop slot, we have Resolute Reinforcements. It just enters the battlefield and helps us create a soldier token to again, help us go wide. And finally, in the three drop slot, we have a set of Imodane's Recruiter. This ETBs, of course, with an ability to pump up all of our creatures plus one plus zero, and it gives the entire team haste until end of turn. We also have a sorcery piece to it as well. For five mana, you can also can create two, two, two White Knight creature tokens with Vigilance. Now, with all of this, we, of course, are going to need a little bit of extra support to ensure our game plan still can go off. So, some extra pump and removal comes in the form of Case of the Gateway Express. We're going to talk about this card real quick. So, when it enters the battlefield, you choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature. To solve the case, three or more creatures must attack in a turn. And if you do solve the case, creatures you control get an extra pump of plus one, plus zero. So, this is actually really awesome for us to pick off Xen one giant creature and then clear the way so we can do some extra damage on the next consecutive turn after getting the pump. Going back to the one drop slot, real quick, we also have Kumamo faces Kakasan. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about this saga because we've seen it many times already. All we simply care about is getting more creatures on the battlefield ASAP. Now, with all the creatures that we have and we're trying to go wide, we may have some moments where our board is going to get gummed up versus our opponent. We can't force through damage even with all the extra pump that we get. To get around that, we will then utilize Impact Tremors here, which can help us out. If you haven't seen this card before, this is a two mana enchantment that just simply reads, whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each creature. So this will hopefully help us close out the game, even if we can't swing for damage. In the three drops slot, we also are going to utilize a little extra support with Charge of the Mites here. One of the sweet things about this card is this instant, of course, can create some Phyrexian Mites, but also the really sweet part about the card is these Mites are also partially artifacts, which means that if you absolutely have to, you can also then cast a Gleeful Demolition on one of your Mites to blow it up and then create a bunch of extra tokens in case you need maybe some more Impact Tremor triggers to go off. As far as the mana base is concerned, again, we are going to be as simple as we can be. So, of course, we have some plains, some mountains, Windscarred Crag is your dual tap land here, and Cabaretti Courtyard to help filter out some more lands so that we can make sure we don't have dead draws. Now, new to these deck decks, of course, is something that all of you have been requesting, which is adding sideboards, even though we are super ultra budget. So, I'll be more than happy to oblige with that moving forward. So, for our sideboard here, if you do want to play this in best of three, we have Table Rakish Instigator, which can help us create some Devil Creature tokens and and the awesome part is this will deny life gain against our opponent here. Also, if you are interested in trying to do some extra damage, also with some extra pump and extra tokens, we have UC of the Pair of Goblins here, which can replace Charge of the Mites if you have to in a pinch. For your artifact and enchantment hate, we have Fragmentize here, 
For your graveyard hate, we have Soul Guide Lantern and a little bit of burn in Lightning Helix here, which can be a great catch-all card just to help close out the game if you are close to beating down your opponent. Whether you've seen my previous deck tags or if you're new to this video, the whole point I'm just going to try to make is going to be simple. Flood the board as fast as you can to overwhelm your opponent and get to your victory. Remember that again, your one drops, your epic cures, and your inspectors will create a token. If you have to hold that token just to do some card draw, that's perfectly fine, but ideally you should have at least one or two of these artifacts out so your gleeful demolition can do its thing and then help you start going wide very quickly ideally if you can go wide with this and if you have to remove maybe like a big green creature or whatever case of the gateway express is again going to help you push that creature out of the way so you can start dishing out some damage and also get your pump once the case is solved remember that your cards such as resolute reinforcements and charge of the mites can be played at instant speed so that means that if you're anticipating say one of your biggest weaknesses to the deck which is spot removal and wraths hold those cards and then once your opponent is tapped out then cast those cards so that puts more pressure on your opponent and puts them in a spot where they have no choice but to answer them quickly or they will lose. Immodane's Recruiter is a great card because you don't have to use the adventure side, but if you're gumming up the board and you need a couple more creatures to hopefully close out the game, that's when you can use the adventure side to then push out a little bit more damage. Ideally, by turn two, if you can have an Impact Tremors out, this also will help you close out the game quicker because most of your opponents, especially if you're playing best of one, don't have enchantment removal built into that deck, so most likely you can then just help it get incremental damage and then hopefully close out the game. One more time, I do want to remind you that your biggest weakness of the deck is spot removal, of course, and wrath. So if you anticipate a wrath is coming, again, hold off on your resolute reinforcements and charge the mites until you know the coast is clear. Likewise, if you know that they have a lot of spot removal, but that means that you're going to want to flood the board as fast as you can because most likely they will not have enough removal for all of your creatures. Now, if you're looking to upgrade the deck, as I mentioned before previously, of course, this is just the basis for the most powerful and arguably most popular deck right now in the format, which is Boros Convoked. Of course, we've already done variants of it already, even on budget terms. So if you want to check those out, be sure to check out some of the links that, of course, I'll have in the video description below. And of course, you can see on screen right now the examples and samples from the previous deck decks that we made a couple months back that reflect how you can make this deck even more awesome than it currently is. And with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. Overall, it may seem a little silly to try to make a super, what some would consider a watered-down version of one of the most popular decks currently running in both Standard and in the Explorer slash Pioneer format, but if anything, Imitation is a sincerest form of flattery, and I think today we did a very good job of trying to mimic a very sweet, nice way to begin your journey if you want to invest in, say, this type of deck. But again, you don't want to spend 30 to 40 rares in Arena, so this is a great way to get started on that if you're a fan of this, and little by little you can upgrade it to become even more powerful than what this budget version that we have today is. But overall, Either way, if you're a fan of go wide strategies, if you're a fan of burn decks, if you're a fan of trying to combine the two together into a weird hodgepodge of both being able to just overwhelm your opponent by either gumming up the board and pinging them down to nothing, or you can just do one massive swing once you get out some of your key creatures, by all means, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you can manage to pull off some wins with some splashy finishes, you'll have a lot of fun doing so, and you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!